Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon Lee coming to you from the home lab environment. One of the things that I really use the home lab environment for is testing and tweaking automation. One of the things I'm going to talk about today in this video is automating virtual machines with Ansible. So stick around, we're going to dive into Ansible automation and automating your virtual machines. Ansible is a fantastic open source automation tool that I highly recommend to any of you guys to get familiar with. It allows you to quickly go from manual, tedious, uh, very cumbersome processes that we do with point and click activities or other means to fully automating those processes. So let's dive right into the environment that I have set up to actually run Ansible. One of the things I really like about Ansible, it's a lightweight uh, tool that you can install on any Linux distribution. Uh, that's primarily what I have used to run Ansible. However, you can use WSL and Windows. You can also use a Docker container, which I have written a couple of posts that I'll link to uh, previously about and actually installing Ansible inside of Docker and using a Docker container, which is super lightweight, super easy. But for the purposes of this video, I, I just simply have an Ubuntu server a virtual machine that I run in my home lab that's persistent. It stays there. I keep my Ansible config uh, and I also can check that into source if I want to. Um, so that's kind of my setup, uh, just Ubuntu server running Ansible. So uh, as you can see, I've got an SSH uh, connection to the Ansible host. And if we simply just do Ansible at uh, dash dash version, uh, we should see which version of Ansible we're running. And we're uh, actually installed, we're up and running. We can uh, issue the command Ansible and we see all of the parameters available to us. So once you get Ansible installed, that's just kind of a sanity check that you can run to make sure that you've got Ansible installed. You can see the version, you can issue the command, so you're good to go there. So let's take a look at the actual Ansible server environment, folders and files that are needed and necessary to uh, run your Ansible playbooks. So I'm going to go through these just one by one and uh, let you guys see and get a feel for how these are constructed, what content they have, and how they relate to your Ansible playbook runs. One of the first critical files is the inventory.yaml file. If we look at this file and look at the contents, uh, of course it's a YAML configuration file. I have a single server in this file, and this basically tells Ansible which server or servers are you going to target underneath this group. So we can have multiple groups that allow us to target different servers. So I could have another group that would target a completely different set of servers. However, for this demo, I am using this demo group targeting win2022.cloud.local. So I'm going to remove that back out. That is the inventory file that Ansible will use to enumerate which servers we want to apply our Ansible playbook to. Now, Ansible needs to understand how to connect to the servers in question. To do that, I've created a folder called group underscore vars. And in this folder, I have a YAML configuration file that shows um, how we can connect to these servers in the demo group. So if I edit this file, we're going to see the configuration as set in the demo.yaml file. And as we can see, we're directing it to use WinRM. We are using port 5985 and we're using uh, Kerberos authentication uh, to connect to the server as I have Ansible uh, connected with Active Directory.
That is our configuration file directing Ansible to as to how to connect to the actual servers. The final piece of the configuration is the actual playbook itself. So we can uh, do that with a named configuration file, YAML configuration file. And I've simply called this one uh, demo. I have just a couple or three uh, tasks that I want this playbook to run. As you can see, we're going to check the Windows features. We're going to enable the Telnet client. We're going to set a registry key and we're going to direct Ansible to make sure the Windows firewall is turned off. So this is just a quick and easy playbook defining these three tasks that will allow us to essentially check and, and see if we are able to connect and run our automation against our Windows uh, targets. So now that we actually have the special configuration files in place, let's now run the Ansible playbook. And doing that is super simple. Ansible, running an Ansible playbook involves another Ansible command, ansible-playbook. And then we simply pass in the demo.yaml configuration file. So ansible-playbook demo.yaml, and we're going to up the verbosity just a little bit by doing a single-v. If we have configured everything correctly, we're going to hit enter and see what happens. Oh, now as we see, the Ansible playbook has completed successfully. And what we see in the output in our SSH uh, session for our Ansible host is we see the actual output of the playbook itself. So as you can see, we can see it enumerating through uh, the actual stanzas in our roles that we are applying. The adding the Telnet client, changing a registry key, and actually running a Windows command. So we can actually check and see on our Windows server if we can note that these changes have indeed been made. I have opened a remote console to the Windows server, which we were running the Ansible playbook against. So let's see if Telnet has indeed been installed. As before, the feature was not installed. So let's take a look. And we have Telnet. So this is confirmation that our Ansible playbook has successfully ran against our Windows uh, server host. So what do you guys think about Ansible automation? I think it's really awesome. Ansible is very easy to get up to speed with and the learning curve is a, a bit less than many of the other automation uh, solutions and frameworks that you will find out there. And just a little bit of tinkering in your lab environment you can become comfortable using and uh, leveraging Ansible to take the heavy lifting out of many of the tedious, mundane tasks associated with managing and configuring virtual machines on a daily basis. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial about how to get up to speed and use Ansible automation effectively uh, with virtual machines. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys very soon.